Welcome to Electron Line. To get a better understanding of what momentum is, let's see how we can use momentum in situations where there are collisions. Because after all, in collisions, momentum is always conserved, which means the momentum before the collision must equal the, men the momentum after the collision, of course, of the whole system. So here we have the system. It's made up of two objects, M1 and M2. M1 has a mass of one kilogram, M2 has a mass of 3 kilograms. Initially, before the collision, M1 is moving at 10 meters per second to the right, which means a positive velocity, and M2 is simply at rest. So it's not moving at all. They collide, and after they collide, they're both moving to the right. Let's say that they stick together, because sometimes in collisions, objects stick together, and otherwise, in collisions, sometimes in collisions, they do not stick together. They bounce off and they move in different directions after the collision. Usually the problem is easier when they stick together and we're trying to find the final velocity of both objects after the collision. So again we start off with the concept, since momentum is conserved, that the momentum before the collision, the initial momentum, must equal the momentum after the collision. So initial and final as we call it. Or sometimes we use the letter I to just indicate initial momentum. Let's add up the momentum of each object before the collision and then we'll find the momentum of, the, of the, both of the objects after the collision. So we have m1 times velocity of the first object, initial, plus m2 times velocity of the second object, initial, must equal, because that's the momentum of the first object, plus the momentum of the second object, that's the initial momentum of the whole system before the collision. And that must equal the momentum or of the system after the collision. Since the two objects are now together, they stick together, we'll just take their total mass and multiply it times their combined final velocity. So that way there's only one unknown here, the final velocity, that's what we're trying to find, and we know everything else about the problem. And here again, I guess I should use an I instead of a uh, sub not because that makes it cleaner. All right, let's now plug in all the values, or actually, it might be easier to divide both sides of the equation by the total mass of the system. So we divide the left side by m1 plus m2, we divide the right side by m1 plus m2, which means this cancels out, and now we have an equation where we have v final equals to all of this. Now, all we have to do is plug in what these things are. Keep in mind that direction is important, to the right is positive and to the left is negative, but to make it a little bit easier, all our velocities will be positive to the right. M1 is 1 kilogram times V1 initial, which is 10 meters per second, plus M2, which is 3 kilograms, times 0 meters per second, because initially it was at rest, all divided by the sum of the two masses, which is 1 kilogram, plus 3 kilograms. And that should equal the final velocity of the whole system. Okay. Adding this together, I have 1 times 10, which means I have 10 kilogram meters per second. And notice, those are the units of momentum. Mass times velocity, so kilograms meters per second is the units of momentum. So 10 kilograms meters per second plus zero, which is 10 kilogram meters per second, divided by four kilograms equals the final velocity. Now notice that the kilograms will cancel out and you're left with meters per second. And that's of course what we want to have because we're finding the final velocity. Well, 10 divided by four, we can then say that the final velocity is equal to 2.5 meters per second. It's positive, therefore to the right. So that's how we use momentum. Momentum is extremely useful to solve problems that involve collisions. Again, the reason why it's so useful is because momentum is always conserved, no exceptions, in every collision. And that's why we can always start with saying the initial momentum must always equal the final momentum, and then we add up the momentum of each object before the collision and set it equal to the momentum of each object after the collision. If the two objects stick together after the collision, you add their masses together and you just have a single final velocity, which makes the problem a little bit easier. And that's what we mean by 
conservation of momentum.